In this session, I want to have a look at the difference between management and leadership, particularly when we're dealing with a crisis situation or a high pressure situation. You can see on the slide that I've got up on the board behind me that we have two overlapping circles. In the one circle, we could write down all of the skills that we might need, all of the systems and processes to be a good manager. And in the other circle, it stands to reason that we could then write down all of the yeah, leadership skills that we might require. Now, the first concept that I want you to take away from this session is that you're going to need two hats. You're going to need a management hat and you're going to need a leadership hat. And you're going to notice that you're going to need to wear both of them, but you can't wear them both together. So the first point to take away is try wherever possible, particularly when you're communicating with your team, to separate management and leadership. So separate the two things out. If we look at the management sort of block circle for a second, in the management side of things is administration, systems, processes, etc. And I would argue that over the last few years, if things have been going well, we're probably more likely to have been managing than leading. That's not a criticism, it's just an observation. The thing is, when we're in a high pressure situation, the management will help us create some direction and some process, but it won't lead the people. Anything that's not systems, process or administration will fall into the leadership box. The leadership box is everything to do with people. Now, the first myth, if you like, of a high pressure situation is that any leader has to have the answer. And that's not true. Some of you will be aware, I've been in a number of really high pressure situations. I've been into Afghanistan a number of times. I've certainly been at Mount Everest. And as you've just seen, perhaps in one of our other video clips, um, the Matterhorn. At no point during those high pressure situations did I or any of my teammates have the answer. But what we did do as leaders was to reassure and create direction and purpose as to what we are trying to achieve. So as a leader, don't beat yourself up about finding the answer. Instead, first of all, reassure your team. Let them know that we're going to work together and we're going to do everything we can to make things work. Secondly, create direction. So here's a little bit of a ditty for you about toilet rolls. Strange, you might think. During the current uh, coronavirus pandemic, people were bulk buying food, people were bulk buying toilet rolls, etc. The reason for that is that in a situation where people feel as though they've lost control to what's going on around them, it is a completely natural reaction to want to wrest back control, to find some purpose in what you're doing. This is where, as a leader, you step in and provide that direction. Because that way, your team members become part of the solution, part of the outcome. So giving them something to do, finding them a purpose, for helping them to find the solution, actually creates the direction that in turn creates some momentum, dissipates anxiety, and your team starts to move forward. In this instance, on the diagram here behind me, you'll notice that the leadership sphere is in front of the management sphere. And that is because, again, in a high pressure situation, reassure first. In other words, lead first. Any kind of management process, systems you put in place too early on will fall on deaf ears. So lead first, reassure, create direction, then collaborate with the rest of the team to create a management system and process to make this work. And that might include things like your weekly webinars, your check-ins, whatever it is you're going to do to create that direction um, and that process.